Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Biochemistry Concepts. Today's video is about beta oxidation of fatty acids. So in this we will discuss why it is named as beta oxidation of fatty acids, what are the steps of beta oxidation and what is the importance of this particular pathway. Coming to reason for why it is called as beta oxidation, the reason is because of oxidation of beta carbon of a fatty acid. So why it is called as a beta carbon? When numbering is given in any fatty acid, there are two ways in which numbering can be given. One of the ways is starting from the carbon which is adjacent to the carboxylic carbon. So the carbon which is next to the carboxylic carbon is called as alpha carbon and next to the alpha is beta. So like that the numbering is given, naming is given. The last carbon is called as omega carbon. So when oxidation happens on this beta carbon, and there is a successive removal of two carbons as acetyl-CoA. It is called as beta oxidation. Basics of fatty acid metabolism. So before we jump into the details of beta oxidation, so let us quickly refresh our knowledge on fatty acid metabolisms. So generally, our body stores excess energy in the form of triglycerides. That is the one form in which energy is stored in our body. So these triglycerides, they are basically made up of fatty acids and glycerol. So when we need energy, our body breaks down these triglycerides to release fatty acids. And that's where this beta oxidation comes into action to release the energy from these fatty acids. Beta oxidation of fatty acids involves the following steps. Activation of fatty acids transport of activated fatty acid into mitochondria the third one is beta oxidation cycle which involves the steps like oxidation hydration oxidation and thiolysis so in activation so actually the beta oxidation requires active form of the fatty acid but the fatty acids are actually inactive so these inactive fatty acids they are converted into active fatty acids by attaching a molecule of CoA, coenzyme A. So this attachment of coenzyme A to the fatty acid converts the fatty acid into corresponding fatty acyl CoAs. So this step actually requires energy and it is supplied by ATP. So this activation of fatty acid actually happens in the cytoplasm. So once the fatty acid is activated, in the next step, this activated fatty acid is transported into the mitochondria. So why this transport into mitochondria requires? This is important because fatty acyl CoA, that is activated fatty acid, as such cannot directly enter into the mitochondria, so where the actual beta oxidation takes place. So to overcome this problem of entry of fatty acyl CoA into the mitochondria, it requires a special carrier molecule molecule called as carnitin. So this carnitin helps in the transport of activated fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondria. Once the fatty acids enter into this mitochondria, the actual beta oxidation happens in the mitochondria. So we call this as beta oxidation cycle because in each term, in each cycle from the fatty acids, two carbons are removed in the form of acetyl-CoA. For example, let us consider the predominant fatty acid that is subjected to beta oxidation in our body is palmitic acid. It is a 16 carbon fatty acid. So when this 16 carbon fatty acid after activation, when it enters into the mitochondria, in the mitochondria, in the first cycle, two carbons are removed from this 16 carbon fatty acid. That means at the end of four steps in the beta oxidation cycle, from the 16 carbon fatty acid, two carbons are removed in the form of acetyl CoA. Now, the remaining 14 carbon fatty acid again undergoes oxidation, hydration, oxidation, and thiolysis. So, these are the four steps that will be repeated in the beta oxidation cycle until all the carbons in the fatty acid are removed in the form of acetyl CoA. So, this is what happens in the mitochondria beta oxidation cycle. Now coming to the individual steps that happen in the uh, mitochondria beta oxidation cycle. The first step is 
oxidation. So the fatty acyl CoA is oxidized by the enzyme called as acyl CoA dehydrogenase. So resulting in the formation of a trans enyl CoA. So this step generates one molecule of FADH2. Step number two is hydration. So this trans enyl CoA undergoes hydration and this is catalyzed by enzyme called as enyl CoA hydratase. So there is addition of one water molecule and this results in the formation of hydroxyacyl CoA. Third step, this is again a second oxidation. In the first oxidation, FADH2 is formed. In this second oxidation, NADH is formed. So this hydroxyacyl CoA which is formed in the second reaction that is hydration is further oxidized by the enzyme called as hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. So this results in the formation of ketoacyl CoA and as I told you this step generates one molecule of NADH. And the fourth step is thiolysis. So this ketoacyl CoA which is formed at the end of the second oxidation is cleaved by an enzyme called as beta ketothiolase. So this results in the formation of acetyl CoA and a shortened fatty acyl CoA chain. So as we discussed at the end of the first cycle, the two carbons will be removed as acetyl CoA and the remaining fatty acyl CoA, whatever remains that is again uh, subjected to oxidation, hydration, oxidation and thiolysis. So this cyclic reactions will be repeated until all the carbons are removed as acetyl coal. Now, so whatever acetyl coal that is released during this process of beta oxidation cycle, it enters into the citric acid cycle. So, where, is the, where it is again subjected to oxidation that results in the production of ATP. Why beta oxidation is important? Beta oxidation is very important because it is the process that releases energy from the fatty acids by breaking the fatty acids. The fatty acids are the major source of energy for the body, especially during times of fasting or starvation. Thanks for watching my video on beta oxidation of fatty acids. I hope uh, you found this informative. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos on biology and biochemistry.